Hey, this is Jim McDonald. Welcome to episode 241 of the PowerCast. This episode is part two with Stan Efforting, in which we talk primarily about business, about uh, the courage that it takes to get started and the fact that uh, things don't have to be perfect to get the ball rolling. Uh, remember that we are not going to have an episode on Friday. We are off this Friday, so uh, take the time to hang out with your family or your friends or people that you uh, enjoy spending time with. Um, probably you're off on Friday anyway. So um, Friday, Saturday, I guess video episodes actually come out on Saturday. Anyway, enjoy your holiday. We'll be back next week with Brooke Entz. Support for this episode of the PowerCast comes from Precision Nutrition, home of the world's top nutrition coaches. Head over to get.pn slash PowerCast for a free nutrition course, especially for PowerCast listeners, focusing on the role of carbs. That's G-E-T dot P-N slash PowerCast. Reebok.com, home of the Legacy Lifting Shoe, the official shoe of the PowerCast at Reebok.com. Eight Man Strong Apparel, apparel for people who lift heavy weights at EightManStrong.com. Compex Muscle Stem Products at CompexUSA.com. Use the code PowerCast for an additional 28% off all but the lowest price model. HowMuchYourBench.net. Use the code PowerCast for 15% off slingshots and free shipping on orders over a $100. And Bodybuilding.com, the world's largest fitness website and supplement store. Bodybuilding.com has free plans for every level. Visit Bodybuilding.com today to become your best self. Mark Bell's PowerCast is also sponsored by Health IQ, an insurance company that helps health conscious people get special life insurance rates. They are also the official life insurance partner of USA Weightlifting. Go to healthiq.com slash PowerCast to get your special life insurance rates today. Recorded live in West Sacramento, California, this is Mark Bell's PowerCast. Standing just to the left of Jim McDean, here's your host, Mark Bell. What the fuck were we talking about? Um, we were going to talk about bid- business. Oh yeah, we're going to get into that business. Bed- business. We were we were talking about motivation and about how um, if you have to get motivated, then maybe it's not oh. something you really want to do. Yeah. And about how business takes a lot of motivation if you're gonna you're gonna do it on your own yeah that's the hardest part is just getting started yeah no kidding and that's generally because folks come up with all the reasons not to do it all the hurdles before actually getting on the track and that's that's what's frustrating and your story was always the one that seemed most compelling to me is that you just didn't see the obstacles right and wouldn't that be a nice place to be (laughs) people are devil's advocates they really first and foremost try and figure out what you know what are the roadblocks why can't i do it Rather than listing, you know, all the reasons why they can, I think that people also have a difficult time realizing how much of business just is stuff that they people will pull out of their asses. Yeah, like there is no grand plan, or there is a grand plan, but the all those individual executions, they're just judgment calls. Yeah, that that are made in the moment that are not informed by some greater wisdom. They just. Well, where you start is never where you end up. It's no different than bodybuilding or powerlifting. You know, you go in with a plan, but you got to make adjustments along the way. Uh, you didn't know when you started which, yeah. that you'd be here today. So many different things just come up along right. the way. The products, the way they're marketed, the, right. you know, everything. Your your podcast. And start there's, out the gate with that. There's a lot Magazine. of learn. There's a lot of learning that has to happen. Uh, along the way and I think you you could read a book or get information from somebody else but ultimately it's going to come down to you doing a lot of the work and you figuring out the research and the only way you're going to know the right way is to do a lot of things the wrong way a handful of times you know and so that's how you learn for me it's been a it's been a learning process I think for the most part I've you know had the opportunity to uh, have some great people around me and that's helped quite a bit. And so, uh, that part, that part has been, has been good. Um, yeah, we touched on that earlier me. with respect to a team recruiting yeah. Yeah. the right people right. around you. It's so, helped me to kind of, you know, make the right decisions. Uh, There's so f- much on the internet now though yeah. too as well. There's so much you information. You can learn a lot of really good information. Look, yeah. I think Gary Vanderchuk is putting out a video, um, two videos almost every day. 
Yeah. I mean, and he's got, he's got tons of information. He's telling people about the importance of Facebook marketing. And I mean, he's sharing a lot of information. Um, his company, you know, charges a, a lot of money, uh, to provide that for people, but he's also giving a lot of information for free. He's yeah. just spouting it out every day. And that's really interesting because I'll put out a lot of information for free. And I think that, and someone will contact me to hire me for my services. Mm -hmm. And 90% of what I give them or better is already content that I put out for free. Yeah. Uh, but I think they do like the comfort of knowing, like when I came to you to train, that, yeah. that, that maybe they can let me manage some of it for them so they can focus on some other things and right. you know, create the, a, a, a guideline for them. Maybe, maybe that's what they like. They kind of like to be. I think people like to be mentored. Mentored. You know, they, yeah. they, they like to have someone kind of walk them through it. Uh, when it came to training, that's what we did, and that's what you did with Flex Wheeler. <clears throat> you and I had lunch. You slid a pile of cash across the table, and uh, that you know that was that. And we started training together, and and you kind of mentioned that you didn't want to think about it a whole lot. Yeah, you know what I found interesting is that uh, I like to talk in terms of concepts uh, because I like to look at things in terms of action items, the most important things that you should pay attention to and right. focus on, and. My clients like detail. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I've always struggled with because they'll ask for, well, how many reps? How many sets? Oh. How much weight? And well, that's where you and I have a lot of common ground then because I'm the same way. I'm like, ah, some for a few. I don't know. Right. Yeah. How much weight should I use? I don't care. I don't <laughs> make yeah. it hard, you know, try to get something heavy in your hands. They're like, yeah. what does that mean? Yeah. And they're kind of empty about the whole, they feel empty about the whole thing. They're like, well, you didn't really give me a program. It's like, no, I, I gave you absolutely what you need to focus on first and foremost is, mm -hmm. the, you know, the general concept about increase in frequency, intensity, uh, volume, uh, and then fueling that. But and how? even with the diet, if I don't tell them exactly what to eat, how many grams, how many calories, mm -hmm. you know, because I speak more in terms of concepts, I try and get as close as I can there. And then I ask them to come back. So now a little homework for you. Uh, you right. come back using these because I want them to understand the concepts, what's right. most important and how, how you're going to grow that over time. Where you start really isn't as important to me. It's hard to give somebody calories or weights mm -hmm. or reps and sets and, until you get some feedback from them as to where they're at and, and how they're progressing. So, it, you know, it's, look, this isn't it. This is just let's just get started. This is somewhat random. Picking things apart in general is probably where, where you need to start. Yeah. I dig in and I ask a ton of questions, dig in and find, try and find holes, mm -hmm. you know, try and fill those gaps. Like I said about whether or not you get a CPAP, so vitamin D, or blood diet, or, training, yeah. recovery. What types of foods are you eating? These are the ones I think are the most optimal. What was the biggest hurdle in starting something like the cooler? Well, I tell you, for me, uh, it was just getting a quality product from the manufacturers in China. Boy, what a hassle that is. <laughs> yeah. You'll send them something, they send you a, a copy back, and it's, it's completely inadequate. Uh, <laughs> even with the Cooler 1.0, uh, when I finally got it back, I found Was that it, a rude awakening for you, or you're like, oh my God? Well, by the time I rolled that out to the market, that was like the sixth version. I had, I'd been working on it for a year and a half, yeah. you know, sending in, getting <laughs> uh, prototypes from them and testing them. During the time, it seems like it's a really long time. A really long time. A year so and a half, not bad. Make this? Yeah, and that was just, you know, the prototype process before we even you're like got it's to, a cooler it holds water <laughs> yeah, it can't be together. that hard and it can't you know so and one of the problems was is that uh you know they try and cut costs at every corner uh and so when you filled it with water and kids were dropping it on concrete uh i was having some yeah some returns have for, damage, for yeah. cracking for mm -hmm. damages and you know the percentages were small but to me you know that that's my <laughs> reputation you know and so I went back after those folks hard, and so we worked on developing this 2.0 when we completely changed the material, and the new uh, material was 10% uh, rubberized exterior, mm. so you, I, you can drop it off a building and it won't crack. Oh, it, wow. It's got some, uh, it's got, definitely has some like flexibility to it. Yeah. You know, as, I, as I'm trying to push on it, that probably helps a lot with any yeah. sort of impact. This can't break. I'm going to have Hoff throw, throw it over a high bar <laughs> and, uh, down on concrete so it won't break, and then we... Uh, obviously improved the threading because it's what one of the most difficult things about shaker bottles is is the leakage and whether or not they thread correctly or you don't or they're not easy to cross thread and so we we drastically improved that so now these right. these don't leak they don't cross thread 
Then they added a few neat little things that people maybe suggested over time. You know, we added the, the vitamin pockets to oh, it yeah. so you can put your That's pretty cool. vitamins in and your keychain holder right. and the, the, the top now, instead of screwing on, it just pushes on. It's a little easy pull cap. So we made those changes and, it, you know, people really enjoy this product now. Right. They buy it and they're like, wow, this thing's great. And then also somebody had suggested the, uh, I don't know why I don't think of these things ahead of time, but the uh, removable protein powder cup. Right. Yeah. The bottom. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, yeah. it, it, part of the reason why you, you don't think of it is because your your focus is on uh, creating the, the product in general. And I think uh, a lot of times it's other people that come to you with those smaller uh, concepts where you're like, oh, yeah, we should add that. I think uh, I get the feedback Rogue Fitness customers. does. Yeah, Rogue Fitness does a great job of that. They'll, yeah. they'll put something out and uh, they'll get some recommendations and they'll go, oh, yeah, we probably should have done that. And that's yeah. why they'll the big companies have those, you know people that test their products for them or they roll out one market yeah. and get feedback well, the car like the car industry is kind of funny that way because they'll they'll have some feature on there that's not very safe right and then that's just the price of doing business and they they have that in their plans so yeah the bean counters sure. being able to <laughs> yeah. being able to go back and fix some of those things well the, the market will suggest your refinements pretty much with any product yeah they'll tell you what yeah. what about it doesn't work for them or what would work better or whatever it's not not too big of a surprise, I guess, that you yeah. would get those, but that they are insightful is sometimes a surprise. Yeah. And you, everything's an evolution. I remember, <clears throat> what's that little deal, the uh, the back uh, shaver deal? You oh, know, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, man groomer. The man groomer. I remember when that first came out and I bought one and got it. And it was pretty cheap and it was kind of hard yeah. to articulate. Yeah. And you'd, 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 well, then. The man groomer, I think it's great. Yeah, eventually. I mine this morning. Yeah, they come out with a better model yeah. that has all the things that, that you wished that the first one would have had. Right. And it was, again, based on customer feedback, they made those adjustments and improvements. You, you've been involved in some other businesses. Um, with, with the cooler in particular, though, like what was the, so, you know, obviously getting the product uh, was one thing. Um, how does this product differ from some of the other things you've done? Because this is an, an invention. This is a product that came from your head. Uh, other product, other things that you've done, I think, are mainly investments, correct? Yeah, investments. Well, real estate, telecommunications company. They were, you know, things that you could uh, you could sell. Obviously, telephone service. Yeah, uh, so they're very different. This was an opportunity for me to, I think, uh, in the industry that I love, <coughs> right? Uh, to be able to continue to to be involved to provide what you know a product that I enjoyed, you know, mm -hmm. a concept that I enjoy, and you know, and behind behind this, of course, came the marketing for it, which. Right was the, uh, I think the reason for the, the Rhino's Rants, which I probably wouldn't have done if I didn't have something to sell. You know, right. information's free, sure, but uh, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You want it to be worth your time. Yeah, when you invest your time in something, you, you should probably get some sort of compensation for it. And then, uh, you, you know, obviously that segued into seminars now that, that as I travel around and do these seminars yeah. with um, Eddie and Charles and, and others and some solo seminars and stuff. So. You know, there's an opportunity in the industry, people, information in general, uh, obviously the online training, working with people like Hofthor and Larry, et cetera, uh, different clients that, uh, you know, all of that comes stems from the industry, being able to be in the industry and share information. And, right. Uh, the cooler was just kind of a nice way to be able to go to expos and meet and greet people and have a product and... It was a challenge. It's kind of a personally fulfilling, probably a, a learning exercise, all that stuff, right? Yeah. And it makes money, right? Yeah. I mean. And you just keep developing. I mean, it's just an umbrella. You, you know, are the kind of the uh, the father figure of your business. And underneath mm -hmm. that is all of the things that you've conceived over time. You know, right. Power Magazine, your podcast, right. your slingshot, your t-shirts, hats, the uh, everything that you've uh, you know, this, the, this hip circle, um, even your jacked and tan, the, the trademarked uh, right. sayings that you've come up with, all of that is, is just part of, you know, your, um, your products, your, um, I think just the, the gift that, uh, you've given the industry yeah. and being creative, uh, being yeah. creative. And I think that that's, you know, kind of what you have to do. And a lot of people have ideas like you or like me and they want right. to bring them to market. And uh, I think that one of the biggest roadblocks is money. And I, you know, I, mm. you started on a uh, on very little. Yeah, 
you know, you just, uh, and you made a commitment just to buy that first batch of slingshots. Yeah, that was, that was, and that was kind of, it wasn't like a hard decision, but it was hard to figure out just because yeah. I didn't have the money to, to I even think figure that out. people overestimate the amount of money it takes to get started. Mm-hmm. Um, and they underestimate what it's ultimately going to cost. Right. And, and that shouldn't, <laughs> yeah. neither of those reasons should prevent you from starting. And right. I, you look back and you look cost at cost both, uh, you know, figuratively and and also literally. Right. I mean, because you have like, uh, yeah, the time the, commitment the, the cost of you, you know, spending the dollar and then you have time commitment and just stress. And there's a lot of things that go into it. It's self-imposed a lot of it, though. Oh, if, absolutely. If you just slow down a little bit and just I know what you want to do, but what can you do now? You know, I want to squat 800, but I only squat five. Mm-hmm. Well, how are you going to get there? You don't have, you don't have to stress about squatting 800 next week. Right. You know, and mm-hmm. the same thing in business. Look at, uh, uh, you know, Damon John, who I have fortune, good fortune to work with now after the, the Shark, Shark Tank, Tank deal. Yeah. Uh, you know, the owner of FUBU, he sold those out of the trunk of his car. Right. When he started, you know, and uh, a lot of. He, he just thought he had a good idea and he was going to move forward with it one way or the other. Right. Yep. And that was it. You just go out and you feel the market. And if, uh, if you I think get he got like feedback, LL Cool J and all kinds of popular people. Slowly start. To wear his stuff, and yep, it went nuts. Slowly start expanding markets. You put a T-shirt on Instagram, and it sold well, and so you added another one and a hat and a knee sleeve. And a, yeah. It, you don't start there. You don't start where you are now. You know, now you've got a, what is this, 20,000 square foot warehouse full of uh, goods and services that you right. uh, promote for people, and it's become very popular. But it started shooting videos out of <laughs> super training gym in your 800 square foot, you know. Yeah, it, it actually even started before that because the first video was, was sh- first videos were all shot and at the back of Body Construction Zone in Woodland. Yeah. yeah. We, we didn't Somebody own anything gym. there. Right. You just had a camera. Yeah, and pretty much, it. yeah. And, and a YouTube link and bingo. Oh, pre, pre-YouTube. pre Yeah. Pre YouTube, yeah, and then we were fortunate enough to be on the front end of some of that, which that yeah. that uh, that helped greatly. Um, this product, you know, varies quite different than uh, you know, say like a protein powder. Some some things, uh, you know, are consumable goods. Uh, uh, you know, a toothpaste or a protein bar, like it's yeah. something that you use and then you need to buy more of. Yeah. So an issue that could come up is somebody buys one, and especially because you made it more durable. Now they have one, and now you got to kind of. Oh, well, they already it. do it. So <laughs> right. I bought one of these two years ago. All right. Damn it. <laughs> and that's what happens when yeah. you know you're selling widgets, and that's what happens with those you know pieces of home gym equipment, and the same thing. You you ramp up, and you get to manufacturing and uh, warehousing a bunch of that stuff. The Solo Flex and the right. Uh, what was the other one? The with the Bow Flex and all those mm-hmm. things. And, uh, you know, they all end up kind of empty warehouses after Nordic a while. Track. You, you sell what you can sell, and they they. So you do have to evolve. You do have to come out with more products. You know, we're working on a half gallon size of the Cooler Sport. Oh, cool. Uh, it's a smaller version that still has mm-hmm. the shaker cup inside. A little more convenient to use side handle. So you just kind of come up with these evolutions like you did with your, mm-hmm. with your product, you know, adding the uh, gangster wraps and your, um, the cuffs for your elbows. And, right. Uh, and now the clothing and line's much improved, which used to just be a, a brand, is now actually a, 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 a clothing line. Right. And so... You know, it's just important. I, I say this in general terms about businesses that A, you can't be trading time for money. You're never, never going to get wealthy that way. And that's your massage therapist or mm-hmm. uh, personal trainer. It's going to be really hard. You're going to have to come up with something that makes you money while you sleep. And you got to think outside the business. Yeah, you got to try and reach more people with less. Uh, you can't touch everybody personally. It's going to be very difficult. And so either you expand by you know, having a system where you hire people to do, uh, to, you know, create, implement your system. Right. Uh, you know, 1% of a hundred people's labor is supposed to a hundred percent of your own. Uh, you can grow that way or come up with, um, products, goods, or services like the t-shirts, et cetera, that can, you can make money while you sleep. Right. Because now people are purchasing those online and then you get a fulfillment, uh, procedure going and, and sell those, uh, or information. You know, now with the internet, you can put together ebooks, et cetera, right. uh, discs, videos, et cetera, you know, things like that, write a book. That kind of stuff is a, is a low uh, financial investment up front. It could be a significant time right. uh, investment. 
But yeah, you guys, I think of it when I think of an investment, like I don't look at this as a, you know, as a huge long term opportunity, mm -hmm. like some of my other businesses that were that were scalable. And right. Like you said, were had a, a offered a perpetuity, right? Uh, like a supplement that somebody might buy every month, right? Or a food item. You go to Costco and they're giving away. You know, people make the mistake. Vendors, in particular, retailers, they'll be like, "Well, can you come to my place and sell these?" Uh, and I'm like, "Well, no, because you know the cost associated with me coming there. There's mm -hmm. no perpetuity. Mm. I, don't, I don't sell. If I touch a customer, they're not buying one every month. So I don't ever make my money back." on the flight and the hotel right. and this other stuff. And so that's not the kind of product that, that lends itself well to that. Whereas, right. like you said, the, the uh, supplements or the uh, protein powders and bars, et cetera, can't. You get somebody hooked on those and they're buying them all the time. Right. And, uh, like I got hooked on those flavored tablets. I was, I was a hundred dollar a month <laughs> habit. Noon tablets, flavored yeah. salt tablets in, <laughs> you know, and that's a good sale. Right. If it's a, if it's a, if it's repetitive. So, and with clothing lines and you can, people will buy different colors, different styles and you, you can switch it up. Yeah. You've changed yours and added more, uh, logos and, and right. names and stuff. So I, I'm kind of talking out loud to hope that as people kind of formulate their idea, Right. They look and see, well, is it scalable? Can I, uh, can it be expandable? What's my market? Uh, this is a, a pretty niche market. Right. It's a summertime market. So it's, you know, not the kind of thing necessarily that you're going to, uh, you know, you've got more of a broad appeal. You've got a year round market. Yeah. You've done one of the first people that's done a crossover, uh, between powerlifting, bodybuilding, CrossFit. And, that's and, been the goal from day one. And your, your brand, you know, Rhino doesn't necessarily something that appeals to women. Right. But strong does. The horn might. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might sell that different business. <laughs> All these ideas that we're coming up with here. So, I, you know, it's hard to be specific. But in general right. terms, you know, the concepts are, um, I think, all the things that we discussed. So here on the PowerCast, we have a new sponsor, Health IQ. Hey, now. They are a, an insurance company that helps health-conscious people get special life insurance rates, and they're also the official life insurance partner of USA Weightlifting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I think that their, their strategy here is similar to like with your car insurance, if you get a better rate because you're a better driver. Here you get better life insurance if you're, I guess, less likely to die. <laughs> if you're a health, more health conscious person, and you uh, are putting effort into that, then you should get some benefit from it, right? Yeah, I feel like we're practicing our life insurance all the time. We're insuring more life by exercising, right? Exactly. Uh, what makes Health IQ so unique is that they use science and data to secure lower rates on life insurance for weightlifters and strength trainers. Historically, you get penalized by life insurance companies for family history uh bmi which is a, a big deal all of Being us have to jack to get penalized for that yeah but all That's of us not have, fair. all of us have silly bmis there we we always yeah. show up as being obese or morbidly <laughs> obese or something I'm like that obese. When we don't, we're not really obese. That's uh, that's just how the how that uh, formula works. Uh, anyway, and other attributes that we don't and we don't get rewarded for the fact that we live a health conscious lifestyle. For the most part, most right. of us do. We pay attention to our diet and exercise, and uh, yes, as you said, trying to live longer and as opposed to shorter. Uh, if you like saving money like you do when you have get a good driver discount on your auto rates, you can should check out Health IQ and get lower rates on your life insurance today. Learn more and get a free quote at healthiq.com slash powercast. There you go. There's where you can be smart about it with Health IQ. Welcome, Health IQ. We talk a lot about diet and stuff on the on the show. Lately we've been talking a lot about keto. Um <clears throat> When people ask you about keto, like when they, when they, you feel comfortable, like that you're giving them great information. Yeah, I, you know, I feel I feel pretty good about it. You know, I think <clears throat> the main thing with uh, with any nutritional advice is, I, I for me, I just always try to make sure I'm not uh, stepping out of my boundaries, right? I'm not talking about stuff that I don't know about, and so for me, luckily, I've had a lot of experience with keto and been doing it since. Uh, since high school on and off. So I have enough knowledge that I can, I can refer people to, you know, specific things. But when it comes to exact calories and kind of precision of it, 
uh, that's where I could use a little help. Well, today's sponsor, Precision Nutrition, is the industry's most respected gold standard for both nutrition education and nutrition coaching. Consultants to companies like Apple, Equinox, UFC and Titleist and athletes like the newest U.S. Open champion, Sloan Stevens. I didn't realize that until I just read it right now. Uh, they've created something special and brand new for PowerCast listeners today, all about low-carb and ketogenic diets. There you go. Uh, when you visit get.pn slash PowerCast, you get access to a hot-off-the-press free course exploring the science behind low-carb, ketogenic, and paleo-style diets. So that's actually there's I'd some, like to check that out myself, actually. Yeah, there's some uh, pretty specific differences between those things as well. It even tackles the always politically charged question, what's the best diet for you? And that's that's something we always sort of there's challenge like people to find. Yeah. Around all that right this course represents some of pn's best work over the last decade as they've helped nearly a hundred thousand clients get their own eating on track and nearly fifty thousand professionals stay on the cutting edge of the industry so if you want to understand the science behind the low carb diet trend and the best way of eating for you or a client grab the free course at get.pn slash powercast that's get g e t dot p n slash powercast sounds good yeah it's, it's uh it's interesting you know because each each business has its own uh its own hurdles and uh you know with with this product in particular how did you get it started because i remember in the beginning uh i think you might have done some form of pre-order or or licensing they get someone to kind of buy in and, or invest in the product before you really launched is that Kind of right. Uh, you know, we did that. Uh, or Europa maybe uh, bought some before you even hit the market with it. Is that is that about right? Or we well, I had already Europa had already agreed to carry it once I had it manufactured and mm. brought in. That was a huge so, deal. So that was before you sold it to the general public, though, right? Correct. And that was kind of the I think tipping it's understand point. For pe- it's important for people to understand concept like that. All I had was a prototype, and yeah. I took it to Europa, and they said they would agree to to distribute to warehouse and distribute. How did you make that work without proof of concept? Uh, all I had was the prototype. I took it in and I, I, I sat across the table yeah. and, and I showed it to him and said, this is what my plan is, is to mass produce these. I want to bring them here. I want to see if you'll distribute them to your Have you done sales retailers. before? Like, do you, I mean, you, I mean everything I've done is... You're a great, you're a great speaker. Yeah. So Every business that, that you do is, is marketing and sales. Sales oriented. When I started my telephone company, we walked door to door, knocking on doors, uh, so you've been, signing right. LOAs and signing up customers. Right. Uh, now it makes more a, sense. You had experience with sales. You went in there and, and told them what this thing is going yeah. to do and what it's for. So what do you think worked? What what hook got them? You know, there's a one of the challenges with the product is that I kind of have to show it to each person mm-hmm. or they have to see it working because mm-hmm. it's kind of an aha moment because when it sits on the counter the, on the shelf, they can't tell what it is or what it does. And as I walk them through, like we did on Shark Tank, like we did on HSN, uh, and they see there's kind of a moment at which, oh, that either works for them or it doesn't. And if it works for them, they're excited because it's unique. There's nothing that, that's been produced that does, you know, keeps all their extra drinks cold for them and mm-hmm. they can have, they carry them around, have them all together. And so, uh, through that, I was able to formulate that pitch for Shark Tank and HSN, and that's the biggest deal, is uh, is just trying to get, trying to market it to individuals. That's why I go to a lot of expos and show them. I walk them through it, you know. And again, that's hard to sell a ton of them that way, having mm. to touch every customer. That's that, that's difficult. So, social media helps quite a bit. You yeah. put stuff out there. Obviously, Shark Tank was huge for us. Just being able to now, uh, you know, email or call. Big retailers, um, you know, Vitamin Shop, Bed Bath and Beyond, Walgreens, etc. Those people have all uh, listened. Uh, Bed cool. Bath and Beyond's going to jump in. Uh, Bodybuilding.com. That's <laughs> great. And so, you know, oftentimes it's hard to meet those folks if you if you don't mm-hmm. get a if you don't have a relationship with them. And uh, we may have talked about it before, but most retailers uh, they want to know what you're going to do to drive traffic to their store. Yep. They don't buy a product from you hoping that they can sell it. They want to know what your advertising spend right. is. And, um, you know, that can be expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, in grocery stores, people pay for the space on the shelves to, to have their products there. And that can be very, very expensive, very competitive. I didn't have to do that once I got on Shark Tank. Now they're like, oh, okay, so you already have, you know, every three months or four months that the thing's going to air again to 10 mm-hmm. million people. Right. And uh, so and they you can see, use that as a clip, an example of what the product is too, right? Yeah. You can use that TV shot for... It's just a, a fortunate... Yeah, you know, 
event that occurred in as part of my efforts to market was to solicit those people and, and right. you know i just got lucky to get on the show yes yeah, well it's it can also be easy to give up on an idea so it's not all luck you know you 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 took the time to to stay invested in it while you're on the show uh i remember they were uh a little condescending towards you yeah and i thought you did a great job you know representing yourself and you did a great job of of trying to keep it positive and keep it what it was about and i think you may have even mentioned that you uh had experience in other businesses and i think that kind of i know it's te television so who knows how it really worked out but i think that they were kind of taken back by that yeah yeah well i mean it's the judge in the book by its cover i'm a right bodybuilder meat neck 250 pound bald guy <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't get very far and then uh then comes the you know when i pitch the product and they're they're kind of having trouble putting together the the delivery with the the face mm -hmm. um, then they asked more questions you know well what else have you done you know what experience do you have Is it maybe uh, and that really was of interest I think to Damon in this case was the fact that um, I do have experience and I do have uh, uh, you know the ability I think to navigate right. these waters it's not necessary to say that that um, you know the product always has to be something that people want right but right. the individual marketing the product can have a huge huge impact on it right so success. damon uh invested in in you pretty much yeah, yeah. that's that's not just the product yeah that makes and sense and oftentimes they don't do that they, right they want yeah. the product to be standalone they don't want it to be dependent upon an individual but uh it was more on my historical success uh and my exposure in in the social media has been uh significant so you know he jumped on board and thought we could market this much the same way how how are you able to get some of the other businesses started? I know you've, uh, I guess your your start was uh, you were managing some apartment complexes and stuff like that, right? Yeah, but everything started on a uh, on a real low budget. I just I never took on huge overhead, mm. uh, say in uh, you know leases right. uh, for buildings or uh, lots of staff. You have to watch those recurring expenses when you start uh, a first business. Are you a penny pincher? I'm a penny pincher. I already told you my <laughs> story about the, the water bottles. You look at numbers and stuff? That's kind of one of the things that I've always been really good at mm -hmm. was, was math. And it's one of the things I did well oh, for gotcha. the multifamily properties that I ran was budgeting and uh, doing, um, you know, progressions, uh, income statements that, uh, you know, for the, the year in advance, et cetera. So, uh, and I would do everything just on Excel spreadsheets, which can be dangerous because you can manipulate those any way you want. In terms of, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, but th the numbers are important. I mean, they have to make sense and you have to have some sort of, you know, cumulative uh, uh, bottom line going. Mm -hmm. So, you know, right. that you're going to meet you know, financial, your financial obligations. And I, I took a lot of risk, right. uh, you know, starting my businesses for sure that I'm a little more risk averse now with the kids and, mm -hmm. and, and wanting to hold on to my existing success. I don't, I don't want to right. double or nothing at this point. So I'm, I'm really, I'm kind of in, into this with not a significant investment and I want it to stand on its own. I didn't want to have to feed it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's another thing that when, happens. When's all the, time. the last time that you've had to have a like quote unquote regular job? It's been a, been a while, right? Yeah. I've worked for myself. Yeah. For a long, long time. For 14 20, 30, years at least. Four, okay. I think when I was uh, well, 15 years, but I was 35, I was, it was when I started my first business. And when I, when I, around the time I first met you, I think you just kind of sold your first business or it was around that time. And uh, at, for a while, you didn't, I don't think you had any extra income coming in. No, because we'd started the engineering firm and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't profitable yet. Yeah. It took us a while to get profitable. What's there. that like? That's gotta be kind of, you know, that's every business I've run. Yeah. When you start a business, don't expect to be taking money out of it <laughs> yeah. for quite a while. You know, it can take a year or two or more depending right. on the business. That's gotta be a little scary though, right? Yeah. You're reinvesting back into it constantly. You're right. always wondering when's this thing ever going to pay <laughs> Yeah. Uh, as you build and grow a business, uh, it continually takes more and more money. Did you have in mind a particular like get out point? It's like, okay, if I don't reach, this goal by yeah, this by three time, years. I'm going to get <laughs> the hell out of this and move on to something I else. I think you have those almost on a daily basis when, <laughs> when you're uh, running at a deficit. You're, uh, and it's just a matter of, of grit, whether or not you hang in or uh, you know, just keep 
trying to find another way to make it work. I think that's most folks, you, once you get in it, you really believe that it's, it's, it's going to work. What happens, a lot of folks, is that they'll take their, their working income, they have the regular job, and just start pouring everything into their business. Right. And that is what I mentioned about uh, this. It should stand alone as quickly as possible and not right. become a drain. Uh, you know, it's really challenging. I, uh, you know, cashed in my 401k, ran up 120 grand in credit card debt mm. and had outstanding um, you know, debt service to uh, bills due to my vendors in excess of a quarter right. million dollars at one point. Wow. And it was not profitable. And so I was, but that was, see, that's when the real estate market collapsed. I don't mean to bounce around too much. Uh, and people lost a lot of money. And I was hugely invested in real estate at the time, but I had sold a lot of stuff already, condo mm -hmm. conversions and, and uh, uh, developed uh, single-family homes and had commercial property. And uh, I bought, built, and, and converted and sold nearly $60 million in real estate over a five-year wow. period until that real estate market collapsed, and, and I got pinched a little bit in that. Uh, but I saw people uh, losing everything, yeah. you know, House, cars repossessed, uh, you know, marriages falling apart uh, in that very difficult time. Yeah, our and, boy from uh, Ape Man, Adam Field, yeah. was uh, that quite a bit. And he had to reinvent himself. He had to downsize his company and yep. he had to take it from having multiple employees to it being just him. Yeah, <laughs> along the way, what happens is, is you end up leveraging, you know. And as I had to do in real estate, I had to put my home up against the first apartment community and I had to put the second apartment community up against the third and the third mm. up against mm. the fourth. And it's like dominoes at some point. And, it, and that one was particularly difficult because you could go in for 3% down uh, and, mm. and get an apartment community and, uh, or build a home for 3% down. Did you have a, ever have a mentor in that process or is it kind of? I had learned from a mentor when I was managing apartments. Gotcha. Uh, he was a, a property developer. So I, I did have learned some experience quite a bit. that learning quite a bit in construction and operations. And so I did have some experience in that. Uh, but the big challenge was is that you put 3% down, and then all of a sudden they want 20% down. <laughs> and the property depreciated by 30 difference. to 40% as a result of the, the market oh, wow. collapsed. So and they're asking is, for cash. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, you go to bed on a Friday night worth 20 million, you wake up on Monday morning, and they're asking you for millions of dollars. Mm. And you're, you're, you don't have cash. So that was difficult. So you know we weathered that storm. Uh, uh, but and had to sell, you know, at a pretty deep discount. A lot of the uh, remaining inventory that I had, hmm. um, and that you know, that kind of changes your your outlook. I don't live as as uh, opulent as I once did. I don't have the two and a half million dollar house or the Rolls Royce anymore. But I have kids, and it's more important to me to have you know yeah. the extra time and the the safety net and and for them. So, uh, you know, you want to own your assets, and so you don't. I, I don't like the leverage <laughs> anymore. I'm not mm -hmm. as comfortable with that. And I guess that's the point of this conversation is, is that uh, if you start a business and you have a job and you have a home, uh, boy, be really, really reluctant to leverage that. The, the banks, you know, want to be fully uh, collateralized against any monies that they loan you. And right. that collateral is your home. Uh, if there's any way you can do it without it, then you can start treating it as I think it should be treated. And it's not as a child. And this is... Uh, as most people try to treat, treat their businesses, they look at them as, as some, something so personal to them. And I understand mm -hmm. that because, you know, being vested in that. But it's monopoly and it, it should be a game. And it shouldn't cause divorces and right. homelessness, uh, uh, you know, or, or, you know, serious changes in your, uh, if you pull your kids out of school and have to move to a different, you know, to an apartment somewhere. And that happens and it happens all too often just because uh, it's not even a matter of overconfidence. It's just a matter of that, that people, uh, you know, they get so invested in, in, in the potential success of the thing and their time and energy investment that they'll, they'll leverage themselves right. against it. I see that on Shark Tank when people are just up there crying mm. yeah, because they've mortgaged their parents' home. And they're yeah. living in the basement of that home, and they need the, the money. And uh, that's, I just, I, I wouldn't recommend. I would rather work out of my trunk than end up in my car. Well, the problem is that that's so indicative of already having made bad decisions that it's like 
good money after bad. Yeah. If you know, say the sharks wanted wanted or talking about investing in something, and they look at the road that the person's taken to that point, yeah. and you think, well, either this person is not a good financial manager, or they don't have a very good idea, or something else is wrong. And if I put more money into it, it's not going to really solve anything. Yeah. Or just that maybe you took on too many expenses. Uh, and that's happened with even big companies that yeah. the, the debt service, they leverage themselves to the point where um, just the loan, paying the loans is uh, it's thank huge, you, and, yeah. and sunk Kenny Rogers roasters. And you know a lot of companies just get uh, a little too big for their britches and expand at too big of a, at too fast a rate and they end up imploding. That always makes me think of Seinfeld, Kenny Rogers roasters. Oh yeah. <laughs> I remember that. How does uh, your lifting experience, um, your bodybuilding, your powerlifting, uh, continually overcoming plateaus, continually overcoming hurdles, uh, getting injured, having to stop, having to reassess, restart, come back, uh, take all this time and effort on a 24-7 basis, making sure your diet is intact and your sleep is intact. How has that helped you in the business world? Business is exactly the same. It's discipline, consistency, time management, it's planning. And you put together like a prep for a powerlifting meet or a bodybuilding show. Then you write out, you know, every meal that you're going to eat. and You're going to sleep, you know, during this time. You're going to go to the gym and train during this time. And I've said many, many times before, if you invested the same commitment of, you know, time and energy and you right. know, discipline and time management into any income producing adventure as you do into uh, your lifting, right? Uh, you'd be a millionaire in five years. I promise you, you would be. And I look at it in, in books like, um, you know, how do kids learn, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. I mean, yeah. It becomes an hour a day. Oh, that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. It's, it's not, you know, again, you, you don't go to the gym as a 200 bench presser and say, Hey, throw 400 on the bar. Let's, you know, give me a pick off. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that, but you can go to the gym and put two and a half pounds on the bar. Okay. It's consistency. My, I put my daughter in Kumon so she could learn reading and, and math before kindergarten. Right. And, uh, and it was really frustrating for it at first, but it's just 20 minutes a day. And I think what you're saying about kids makes so much sense because I've been telling people for a long time that, uh, you know, genius and creativity and some of these things uh, can they can come from just dicking around. And kids have a lot of that in their lives. They have a lot of time where they're just messing around. They're just playing and they're going to go back and forth between education and between playing. And I think adults should do the same. And when you go into the gym and you're training, sometimes an idea might hit you then or or you might be uh, preparing for the unknown through your training because Training is not just training to build more muscle mass and to it's self mastery ultimately is what it ends up being. You're trying to master, you're trying to solve a problem for yourself. You're too fat, you're too skinny, whatever the case is. And you are, you are building potential towards any success that you may have later on. And I don't think people are always understanding that. Yeah. <laughs> people learn, I think over time, if they're starting a business and they want to um, get an investor, the investor is going to ask for a business plan. And they might not have one. They might create it for the investor. <laughs> mm -hmm. The business plan is your plan. You know, right. that's what you should have created uh, at the very first thing you should do. Right. And but most people are like, yeah, I'm going to start this business, and uh, I've already got the name. <laughs> and I'm like, well, hell, you're 90 percent of the way there. You got the name. <laughs> right. That's great. All you need is what? You know, I don't know. I just figured somebody would give me a whole lot of money and a. I, I've seen it too many times. Yeah. You know, I did some venture capitalism when, uh, many years ago, and it, it hardly worked out very fruitfully. Right. Uh, and because people were generally way ahead of their experience. Mm. Uh, and you have to have a, a proof of concept. <clears throat> you know, you have to um, have at least made some money, whether that means selling a T-shirt out of your car. If you just sell one, then you can sell two, and then you can sell ten. Uh, same thing with my phone company. I walked around, knocked on doors, in neighborhoods and when that yielded enough money then i ran these little cheap commercials on on uh, white trash tv on cops mm -hmm. and court tv yeah. and jerry springer that's uh, great and people started buying more product and when that proof of concept when i was able to be profitable in one city then i expanded to the state 
and then mm. I expanded to the next state and ultimately ended up in 22 states selling the servers. Wow. So you, you have to find something that works at a very small scale, whether it be at your local uh, marketplace, you know, your, uh, whatever those are, and, and then just start growing it from there, much the same as we talked about Damon John doing with FUBU out of the trunk of his car. You know, and then you expand and expand and expand. Even Mark Cuban, he used to go door to door and just sell stuff as a kid. Yeah. I used to do the same thing. I had a wagon with me. I'd wheel it around. And my neighborhood, the driveways could not be any longer. <laughs> and you can't, where I where I grew up, it's not acceptable. You can't walk across someone's lawn. Or you can't walk. You're kind of like in the woods. And you could potentially get, yeah. <laughs> you potentially get shot or yelled right. at or whatever it might be. Uh, so you weren't able to do that. So I'd, I'd drive this, you know, I'd bring this wagon all, all the way up the thing, knock on the door. And more often than not, no one would answer. Because yeah. they, you know, they don't want to be annoyed by whatever the hell it is you're selling. And they saw you coming. They saw me coming. Yeah, they saw me coming because it's taking me forever to get my fat ass up the uh, driveway. But I'd sell like candles, or my parents like got involved and they helped and they bought some stuff and uh, they were like, yeah, you know, because I was trying to sell stuff like out of a garage. I was trying to sell. My dad's like, it's got to be stuff that people like want. And you want to <laughs> yeah. try to sell them, you know, just not crap that's lying around the house. <laughs> Dryer yeah, like I was like, but this is in perfect condition. I could totally sell this, but. Yeah, the, the point is, is you got to figure out a way to get some sort of momentum and you have to be able to prove that you can sell stuff, right? Yeah, it, it's, 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 a, it's a blue collar thing. There's, it's a hustle. The market, the grind, everybody talks about it yeah. on the internet, you know, <laughs> the grind. It is, it's an everyday thing and marketing is hugely important. I always think it's funny when um, uh, someone will come in, take over a, a company and the first thing they do is they start cutting advertising and marketing expenses You're right and always playing my off mind. salespeople you know <clears throat> uh, we got to control these costs you know and, and about half of your operating expenses are usually staff uh, and so they start pinching down in those areas right. and then next thing you know uh, wow you've really controlled costs really well but you, there what goes your to, what happened to sales there goes your revenue yeah, <laughs> right. you know? and I, I say the same thing in terms of our our, our, <clears throat> our budget you can only do so much you know our national mm -hmm. deficit you can only do so much cost control, and we have plenty to do. But really, the only way to get yourself out of a deficit like that is by growing the income. There's a much higher side in growing income than there ever is in, in you know, people who come in and start counting, uh, you know, start putting locks on the uh, uh, office supplies, uh, <laughs> so people aren't taking too many yeah, pens, how many and pens pencils and staplers. Yeah. Well, then people uh, want to steal them too. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you worry about those folks because. You, you can never right. cost control effectively enough to build a big business. The, the upside is in growing income. I think the problem with things like staff reductions, though, is that they're very popular with, it, with shareholders. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> I, you know, staff reductions should be done mostly <clears throat> by, uh, by getting rid of, of underperforming people. Mm -hmm. should have some sort of measurement in place. Mm -hmm. right. and, and that's usually not how it's done. It's usually given as a percentage mm -hmm. target or a, or a number target or whatever, and you just have to start going through people. And and then, you know, once those people are gone, then there are things that they knew how to do that now nobody knows how to do, and, and it doesn't get done anymore. And maybe it was a critical function, maybe it wasn't, but, you know. Yeah, those are all difficult challenges as the businesses expand. How do, you, how do you know if something is a good investment for yourself? Uh, you know, I, I look at a lot of the things we just talked about. I, I look at uh, what its market is, whether it's a year-round market, whether it appeals to a lot of people. Mm. Uh, and then in the apartment business, when we used to go around and decide which apartment communities to buy, we would go to the competition. And we would see how the product compared. Uh, mm. In this case, the apartment community compared what the prices were. And then, you know, what we could sell our apartments for, and whether or not there was an upside there, some right. opportunity to, uh, over in the apartment business, raising rents was, of course, the way to increase value of the property. That increase, makes so much sense. I mean, I, I, I say that to my staff all the time is just copy what somebody, like, just look what, uh, what's Nike doing? You know, what's Rogue doing? Like, Who's just, doing a great job? Just <laughs> go look, just go look. Yeah. Like, just, you know, they're, they want, like, a product description or whatever. It's like... Yeah, I mean, I can help you with the product. It's not not a hard thing to do, but just look up the verbiage that's being used by somebody who's already successful. And we're not trying to copy proprietary information. We're just trying to uh, find a good theme to go with. You know yeah. what I mean? That kind of stuff. Yeah, put your own flavor on something that already works. And that's what you do. Does, you, does the product, uh, 
you know, what does the market look like? Is it comparable? What's your pricing of the product? How much do I think I can sell? Uh, and then, you know, at some point you just have to decide, or is it, does it work for you? Is it fit, you know, in your mold? I try and stay away from things that I don't have a lot of knowledge about. Right. When I got involved in the phone company, I'd already spent a number of years as a vice president of the telecommunications company. When I got into real estate, I'd already spent eight or nine years operating right. real estate. Uh, so I knew about that. Well, and then also when you started this product, when you started the cooler, uh, I would imagine that you already knew some people at Europa. Yes. Yeah, you already had relationships. Before I ever committed to purchasing the first container, the manufacturer's right. first container, I had to make sure I had a distribution right. uh, avenue because uh, to try and bring stuff to your own warehouse, the mm -hmm. cost associated with that, and then reship it, and particularly these days when you're trying to compete with somebody like Amazon, right? Uh, the, it's really yeah. difficult. But being in the bodybuilding world, you you kind of knew some of these people already, right? You already had a yeah, yeah, yep. And I already had a bit of an audience, right? Which is nice, so I could reach out. I knew over social media uh, and through the expos and stuff. So I think people are quick to ask favors of people they don't really know yet, you know, and 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 not saying that this is a hundred percent a favor, but it sure does help to have a previous relationship with somebody absolutely before presenting them with an opportunity, right? Absolutely. And you know, one of the big things that uh, that folks often do is is they look for the the home runs and you, you you can get a lot further faster by hitting a bunch of singles and so you don't need to close get a on big first deal. base it'll station to station ball yeah that's all you got to do and folks are looking to close deals like you know like i said we did the deal with bed bath and beyond or shark tank those are big deals and you might not get too many of those uh, but you you have to piece together a bunch of singles and stay out there uh, if it means door to door if it means you know starting up your social media from scratch and not really you know, just mm -hmm. hashtagging and, and uh, just trying to get out there. Your, your breaks will come, I think, as long as you haven't invested too much into the thing, then you, you can make those decisions ongoing as to whether or not you're going to continue to pour money into the project uh, or, you know, move on to the next project. A business is a living, breathing thing, and it has needs. And if you don't satisfy those needs, uh, then it's going to suffer. Uh, but that doesn't mean that, uh, <laughs> that you need to you know, make huge sacrifices yourself, like we talked about earlier. Right. Uh, and it, you should, I look, I used to look at debt when I ran up all those credit cards and I cashed out my 401k and everything. I used to think that was a huge deal. I got to get these bills paid and I would stress about that. And after a while I was like, you know, these guys are investing too. They're mm -hmm. making profit on, on me. Right. And, and they're taking risk. And you know, when I invest, I take risk. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to stress about that. That's My dad's yeah. helped people with the financial planning for years. And one of the first things he'll tell people that are uh, stressed about their finances is just don't pay your mortgage. He's like, not, he's like, there's, they, they want you to pay it so bad <laughs> and they need you to pay it so bad that even though they're going to, you know, send, send uh, letters to you and stuff like that, he's like, they're not really going to do anything about it. And if they did, it's going to take them a long time to be able to kick you out. Yeah. So it's, well, you know, it's like some of these things that we, that we stress so much over, I mean, they, they do have to happen eventually. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think that, uh, we just think that everything's going to be so immediate. Yeah. And, uh, I was trying to separate that part of your life from your business. As right. soon as you commingle the two. Right. Uh, and it starts draining. I mean, that's a, an anchor on a boat. <laughs> uh, you don't, you don't need. And so yeah. I, it started up with the idea that it could fail and then, You'll make those decisions a little smarter, I think, long term. Have you always been very calm? You're, you're very calm. Have you always been very calm in business and with yeah, your training? Yeah, my pops is an engineer. I'm pragmatic is what I would call it. I, he says, you know, sleep <laughs> on it. He would always tell me, you know, mm. and make a decision tomorrow morning. It's fucking great life lesson, sleep on it, period. Yeah. I mean, that's great. That's a great thing. Yeah, I don't have much. Uh, but for a few times throughout my competitive career when uh, – Trend was in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> I generally don't flip people off on the freeway, but uh, a couple times, you know, it, was, it, it can happen. Yeah. Uh, what about Amazon? And, um, I know that they've been, we all noticed that they've been pushing into the, um, nutritional supplement, fitness, yeah, bodybuilding the world. This year, yeah. Um, do you, do you foresee yourself dealing with them at some point? Are they inevitable? Yeah, I, I deal or? with Amazon. The challenge is, is that, that, people will undersell your products. Yeah. And uh, it's really important that you maintain 
price integrity because if right. you want retailers to also carry your product and they're being undercut, then, uh, they, then they won't carry it. Right. And, uh, you know, discounters, I think, depreciate the value of your product. It has a certain value and it needs to maintain that value for you to be successful long term. And it's not about, it's not strictly about profitability necessarily. Yeah. Uh, because you'll still make your money because right. you're selling wholesale anyhow. Right. Right. So you're getting your cut. But when they start discounting, uh, then people just don't have the perceived value in the product and it becomes more difficult long term uh, for you to you know, continue to develop more products. It sucks, but a manufacturer sells to you. You have to sell to a distributor. A distributor sells to a retailer. A re retailer sells to the consumer. And if you lose sight of that string, mm -hmm. uh, then you start you know, to lose... I think potential sales outlets. And I think what you should look into is just selling directly to Amazon. Yeah. From yourself. You know, you guys should probably do it internally. It would probably be your best option. Just yeah. having a third party person in there is not, uh, it just ends up being more difficult. Yeah. You know? And they don't have to, another thing is, is they don't have to manufacture, warehouse, anything. They don't have <clears> to pay for it up front. They, a lot of the people that'll go on Amazon might, might be fulfilling from your supplier. Right. Uh, in in my case, thing. through Europa. Uh, yeah. And Europa doesn't know they're selling on Amazon. Mm. They don't know they're discounting the product and because the people on Amazon don't necessarily, their account doesn't necessarily reflect their business. Right. Uh, it's really difficult to, to chase down. Right. Yeah. If, if you guys did it on your own, then you wouldn't have to worry about that part of it. Right. Uh, the biggest challenge. You also have a contract between you and a third party person, making sure their behavior is good. And then you just cut them off. Like that's stuff we've done. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> biggest challenge is now is uh is the shipping it's a pretty big item even though it's not heavy yeah and uh, ever since they went to it used to be weight now it's size mm. you know yeah it really it's hammered basic. the folks that were selling those uh, protein potato chips oh, yeah. basically a bag of air <laughs> but it was taking up <laughs> yeah. space bag and now they're air. charged you know based on that space yeah uh it was just killing them it just, it just cuts into your your profit margins right uh, or it may make it such that a customer won't buy because the shipping makes puts a price point on it. That's well, if it's not weight related, maybe you can fill it with some tap water. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no kidding. The upsell everybody on it. <laughs> I feel like every time I order something from Amazon, I, it comes in a gigantic box, and I have Prime. Yeah, so every like, once in a while, it'll come yeah. in a huge box, and it'll be something that's this big. Yeah, it's a gigantic yeah. box. It's like whatever they got. I guess is what they tons use, of padding and reinforcement. Yeah, and yeah. Like, holy the kids fuck. love those. They jump up and down and pop the little. Yeah. Air padding. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good place to keep your kids, too. They keep them quiet. <laughs> Crayons and a box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good right. way to go. I think that's uh, all the time we got. Where can people find you, Stan? <clears throat> StanEfforting.com, thecooler.com with a K. Uh, I think Instagram's also Stan Efforting. Facebook's also Stan Efforting. Any seminars coming up or anything like that? Yeah, a lot of fun stuff coming up. I think I'm next week, I think I'm in uh, D.C. with Eddie Cohn. Cool. And then... Uh, I don't know. Next week's the uh, meet. I'll be in Oakland at. Uh, oh yeah, Jesse Burdick's meet. Jesse yeah. Burdick's meet the Reebok Record Breakers. That would. Yeah, be that'll be cool. Yep, Eddie Cohn's coming there to, to to judge. I'll be judging as well. And then the week after, I'll be in D.C. And then we've. I got, don't think uh, you're qualified to judge. <laughs> I think we've got Cincinnati in you January. And are, and you and Ed are both going to be like, "That's not the way I did it." Red, <laughs> red light. <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it. Cool. Well, people can uh, just follow along at us. Uh, on Instagram, follow his Instagram, and you're going to see some of the seminars he has coming up. Always amazing having you here. Always inspiration. It's always a lot of fun. Every time he comes into town, it's just a reminder for myself. I got to get my ass in shape. I got to get my ass stronger. I got to figure out ways of making more money. I got to figure out ways of keeping up with the rhino. Strength is never a weakness. Multiply your hustle. Multiply your muscle. May all your shits be tapered. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell on Instagram and Twitter. Catch you later. Shout out to all of our sponsors, 8-Ban Apparel at 8BandStrong.com, Bodybuilding.com for all your supplement needs, Compex USA. For cutting edge muscle stim machines, get an additional 28% off when you use the code POWERCAST on all but the lowest price model. Reebok.com, home of the Legacy Lifter, the official shoe of the PowerCast. 
increase your bench at howmuchyourbench.net. Get 15% off slingshots with the code POWERCAST. POWER. The only strength magazine available in both digital and print at thepowermagazine.com and Precision Nutrition. Get.pn slash PowerCast. That's G-E-T, G-E-T dot P-N slash PowerCast. And Health IQ. Go to healthiq.com slash PowerCast for your free quote. I am at the Jim McD on all the social medias. Follow the show on Instagram. We are at Mark Mills PowerCast. We're out here. Time to eat. Yeah, time to get some food. <laughs> <laughs>